This video right here is sponsored by Squarespace. It's finally time for you to build that website you've been wanting to build. And if you use the code SGR at squarespace.com forward slash SGR, not only will you get yourself your free trial, but you get 10% off your first order and you'll be helping the show too. More on this a little later on in the video. I wanna take you for a ride. We all have the ability to start a crowdfunding campaign, the ability to make a video and share our brilliant idea to the world. And although sometimes that works out pretty great, other times, not so much. And I've only gone and worked it out. I have covered over 150 Kickstarters, Indiegogos and GoFundMes on this channel. That's not including Kickscammer News. <laughs> And now, I think it's time for a little bit of a change. Don't you agree? You see, today I've decided not to talk about where crowdfunding sites like Kickstarter got it wrong, but instead, today I'm going to be talking about four instances that Kickstarter, with a side ordering of GoFundMe, actually stepped in and suspended controversial campaigns on their own sites for various reasons. Are these reasons legit? Well, that's going to be down to you to make that decision yourself. And word of warning before going ahead, peeps. Yep, all four of these campaigns are super controversial. And depending on the kind of person that you are, any one of them may result in a nice big palm print directly across your own face. Personally, it baffles the brain that these campaigns even existed in the first place. Anyway, enough wolfing it up. Let's get right into the video. Hi everybody, I'm Danny Overton, aka DJ Slope from Slope's Game Room, and this is Kick Scammers for controversial Kickstarters that got suspended. So Let's chat about Ilma Gore. That name may be a little bit recognisable to you because she recently did this. A naked painting of Donald Trump with a micro it, along with plenty of other world leaders too. Now there actually is a documentary coming out about this particular picture and the big fiasco that went around it and Ilma Gore herself as well, of course. Whether you agree with this or not, it's down to you. She's obviously a very controversial artist resulting in attacks supposedly being made onto her by Trump supporters. Honestly guys, this mess is all up for debate and I'm not speculating either way. All I can tell you is that Ilma gets onto the front page of news outlets all around the world for quite a few rather controversial reasons. And you can argue that this all started back on January the 10th, 2015 over on Kickstarter when she created the campaign that instantly blew up asking people to donate as little as $10 each to get their name or whatever they wanted tattooed onto her until it covers her entire body. I want to be a singular tattoo for my latest art exhibition and I want it to be your names. This is going to be an art exhibition in LA featuring my body and your names. I think the tattoo on my forehead says it best. Life is art. There is something absurd and beautiful about having an accumulation of absolute strangers' names draped over my pale goth skin. Even if half of them are penis butt. Why, you might ask? Simply because I can. I know what I'm about, son, and I am my own ultimate canvas. Like my art exhibitions and murals, this is a social and artistic experiment. Each person's name to me represents you, the main protagonist in your own story. I will be covered in a hundred tiny stories. And as it's on this list, it actually got suspended by Kickstarter, obviously, only five days after it went live. Although it did manage to get itself up to $11,072 by 469 backers. Which means that not only do you get your $10 reward tattooed on her leg, or you and a friend next to each other for $25, or even the $50 reward of both of the previously mentioned, plus a graphite picture from Ilma of what you would look like if you was made out of ham. Because, you know, art. 
Thankfully, all of the backers managed to get their wishes anyway, as the campaign ended up going over to GoFundMe, and although that too got suspended eventually, it did actually manage to raise over $17,000 with the money being donated to a youth organization called Spy. As of the making of this video, it's not actually finished yet, but still, she's done a hell of a lot of it. So, what do you think? Is this art? Was Kickstarter right to suspend this project and GoFundMe right to eventually remove this project from their website? Is getting a tattoo of a name on your body a stupid idea? Or is it a really good idea? <laughs> hey there guys. Hope you're enjoying the video. Um, for those out there that were a little bit more observant, you may have realized that this video is a little bit short considering it has four segments. The reason for this is that YouTube didn't like two of the segments. We think it's the, uh, two of the segments that they didn't like. They're very vague, they're very vague. Um, so basically, at least one, but probably two of these segments are too hot for YouTube. So, what have I decided to do? I've decided to put them in a separate video and you'll be able to see them down below in the comment section. And uh, yeah, if you want to see the other two after seeing the next one, go over to my second channel where you'll be able to see them. Thank you guys for supporting me and uh, yeah, let's carry on with the video and see the next segment. And like I say, once you've watched that, go down below and check out the other two. So, let's chat about adoption. You know, depending on where you are in the world, the adoption process is, you know, going to be a little bit different. But we can all agree, uh, for a parent, it's an incredibly hard task to undertake. Over the many years of children needing parents, the process has become extremely long-winded and a bit tedious. But in my eyes, adopting isn't something that should be taken lightly. And although it may have taken years to go ahead, from what I've discovered, it's not because the wannabe parents are trying to find the right child, but instead a child, or at least the adoption agency, trying to find the right parent. This is the most important part of the process, right? You know, for obvious reasons. Well, Adopty didn't see it this way. The process can take up to two years as the campaign boasts and the process of adopting a child is very much outdated. If only there was an easier way to speed it all up. <laughs> this is so bad. Apparently the solution to all of our adoption problems has been in our hand all along with Tinder. For those of you that don't know, Tinder is an app that connects to your Facebook profile, shows up an image of you, and if somebody else likes what they see, they swipe right on your picture, and if they don't like what they see, they swipe left. If two people swipe right on each other, chemistry is instantly there of course, and it's time to message each other to see if you can hook up and, I don't know what, go bowling or laser tag or whatever it is people do when they go on dates. Now apply all of that ideology to an app called Adoptly and boom, you got yourself a horribly immoral campaign for wannabe parents that can swipe right on the kids that they want and left on the ones that they don't. Just set up a profile and you are ready to go. Adoptly will instantly match you with all eligible options. It's intuitive, easy to use and even a little fun. Just swipe right if you're interested or left to keep looking. That is so upsetting and evil. <laughs> this eventually leads you to being able to IM the child, to be double sure that this kid is for you. And hey, that is step two. If they seem too needy or they're into something that, you know, maybe you're not, you know what to do. Swipe next. Guys, this whole campaign is just simply evil in my opinion. It just baffles me that someone or some people in this instance actually believe that this was a good thing and my god what are you basing this on simply the child's looks you know this one looks pretty but <laughs> Yes, that last one is evil, guys. Hey, hey, hey. 
DJ Slope here from Slope's Game Room, the creator of this here channel. Thank you all so, so much uh, for watching. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do hit the subscribe button and that notification bell if you want to be notified on everything that I upload. Um, but yes, uh, before we go ahead, I just want to give a big shout out to this video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace? 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 Yes, it's 2020, no doubt. Everybody's heard of the word Squarespace before. The awesome website building um, website, and well, they are still doing what they do in 2020, quite simply because they are easily one of the best. Take it from someone that has his own website. There's just so many website building websites that claim to be the best, but the reason you continuously hear the word Squarespace so often is because they're pretty much the best at what they do. If you are someone like me, someone that hasn't got a lot of time on their hands, wanting to get out as much content as possible, uh, but you know the importance of actually having a website, Squarespace people is for us. And thanks to me, if you go to squarespace.com forward slash SGR, not only will you get yourself a free trial, you get yourself 10% off. Don't forget to use the code SGR. It's 2020, come on, pull your finger out. It's finally time to get to work on that project that you have been thinking about doing for the longest time. Today is the day to do it. Go to squarespace.com, get your free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash SGR and get 10% off the first purchase of a website or domain, and boom. You've just built yourself a new website and you've supported Slopes Game Room during the cold YouTuber month of January on YouTube. Seriously, this is a horrible month for YouTubers. So yeah, thank you so, so much to my sponsors, to the people that are watching and to people that support the show, including the Patreons and YouTube members. With an extra big shout out going to Gary Pinkett, Mantis, Ryan Burford, Andrew Dalton, Ben Jackson, Jonathan Haywood, Kevin King, Christopher Turnbull, Phil Lowlands, Samuel Smith, The Geeky Dad, Roven Army, Ryan Holtz, Retro to Next Gen, Hawk89, Dina, Robertson Dunn, Adam Lefty Taylor, Intrigued Gaming, Tim Labonte, Asobi Quang, DX, Tim Lunn, Pixels.Limited, aka Samuel Victor, uh, Conrad Constantine, Pretendo64, Creamy Elephant, Casey Garner, Blitz Hedgy, King Link Review, Shadow Dragon, Burite, Jim Knapp, Shadow Dial, Game Apologist, Chris Applin, Wobbles and Bean, The Wonder Ducks, Ye Old Hamburger, Dan Petit, Lucas Softail, Ronnie Method, SSWB, Solex Captor, Jeremy Rodriguez, Nick Pollard, Bram Perez, Marcus King Emo Cut, Tyndall, Richard Carter, aka Fantastic Dizzy, Todd Paul Float G, and of course, Petty Mew and Trans Rights. If you want to get your name shown, get your name shouted out, come and see what I'm working on, and all of that usual stuff, there'll be links down below for you to become a Patreon or a YouTube member, whatever you prefer. But anyway, guys, thank you so, so much for watching the video. Uh, and yes, um, uh, this is DJ Slope signing out. And hopefully I'll see you all next time.